game. All right. Uh, time for player interviews brought to you by Gatorade, helping millions play. Join us in field tomorrow. David Locke right now with Walker Kessler. Walker, yeah. let me remind you, rookie, you cannot swear when I ask you what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> What just happened, man? That was, I was not expecting that. That was awesome. You know, got the steal, made a good bounce pass to Tech, Tech finished it off. Super happy for him. We had a great game. Um, yeah, I'm lost for words. It was, uh, it was something, though. I mean, <laughs> the amount of things that just had to go right for the Jazz. We'll get to your first career start here in a second. What, what, what was the feeling that you saw, like, even the first steal on the play before? Listen, I, like I said, I think that, I don't know, it was, it was something special, and, uh, you know, got to win tonight, so that's, uh, that's really fun. All right, what was your emotions around your first start? Uh, I was good. I was nervous, not going to lie. But, um, you know, excited, excited we got the win, and, you know, it was fun. I know you ducked me in the locker room before the game. You weren't in your regular spot at your regular time. <laughs> you broke your routine. Yeah, I was off by myself a little bit, kind of working on my breathing. <laughs> 10 points, 12 rebounds, five blocks. At times, this has looked like really hard for you. At times, this has not looked really hard for you. What has it been like so far this year? Uh, it's been a lot of fun, you know. Um, I couldn't ask for better teammates, couldn't ask for better staff, couldn't ask for better fans. I mean, it's, it's a dream come true. Walker, congratulations. Thank you for not swearing. <laughs> of course, my mom wouldn't be too happy, so I know, it wasn't but for it you. Been totally reasonable <laughs> considering what we just saw. Well, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. Thank you very much, Walker. All right, y'all take care. <laughs> He's such a good one, and I'm telling you, he is growing and sprouting. And I predicted at some point he would be the starting center for the Utah Jazz in the starting line. I guess that starts tonight, you know, because we're already marketing. Holy Fontecchio. <laughs> what a game. I I mean, it was an awesome game, win or lose. Anyways, I thought it was a good game for our team for many different reasons, which we'll get to. Uh, but I really felt like we saw Simone Simone Fontecchio uh, in, in a comfortable position, not just with the last play of the game and the dunk, but... It looked like he was, I mean, he had that left-handed dunk as well that he took off the dribble, um, but he hit, you know, he hit his shots. Let me look at what he he shot from the field. Um, but he just looked like he finally looked comfortable out on the floor, and that's what I've been waiting for because, again, I always go back to this. I've watched, I watched him in EuroLeague, and I just feel like he is a piece to the puzzle. Um, at one point I, I tweeted out, um, tell me that he doesn't remind you or have similarities of Clay Thompson. Uh, I'm not saying that he is Clay Thompson by any means, but he has similarities, especially with the way he, uh, catches and shoots off the, or, um, off the ball. And, you know, he only needs like one dribble in order to shoot most of the time. Um, just really smooth. He shoots 60% from the field, goes three for six from the three point line, 18 points, uh, three rebounds, one assist, plus four in the plus minus. I mean, that was by far his best game, which we needed in order to win that because we don't have Lowry Markinen. Uh, Colin Sexton goes out, Jordan Clarkson gets ejected. Um, no, no, Mike Conley still, which he was a, he was kind of like a game time decision. So it was obvious. We, we really need a point guard. Taylor Horn Tucker didn't play any minutes, which was something that we'll hit on as well in this. Um, I thought that Nikhil Alexander Walker had a really good game uh, until like crunch time. <laughs> and uh, before he got that still that basically won us the game. Um, I was thinking, man, what, you know, this would be a time to play THT to kind of control the pace a, a bit. Um, but that being said, I think that might have been the kills best game as well. It doesn't show on the plus minus. He was he was negative 11, which was the highest of the team, but he scores 11 points. The, the thing that really killed him were the turnovers. He just had a couple turnovers, like trying to pass cross court to a three point shooter and got picked off. 
Um, he had three steals, though, so I guess that kind of makes up for the turnovers. Four assists, seven rebounds for uh, a little or guard, which is huge. We need rebounding so bad. Shot 75% from the three, 80% from the field. Um, hard to argue that that wasn't his best game. Um, I want to hit on the last, I mean, getting two steals like that was incredible. Uh, I was listening to the post game with Bowler just barely said those last two buckets, the three by Beasley and then the dunk by Fontecchio were the only two baskets in the last three minutes of the game that the jazz had. We were up by five, I believe, with three minutes to go. Um, pretty crazy in order to get two stills. You're down by four points to get two stills and pull that one off. Uh, when Nikhil Alexander Walker went to go for a two, I said, what the f are you doing? And then he kicked it out. I go, oh, and I, I think that uh, play was designed by coach, which if it was, what an amazing play uh, to, to act like you're going for two and then kick it out for a wide open three. Um, man, my brain's all over the place right now. Cause I just can't believe that that actually happened. I thought we were for sure going to lose by one. Olenek takes the ball right out of Jordan Poole's hands. I was hoping that they called a time would have called a timeout. They didn't. Fontecchio tried to shoot that three to tie the game and it got blocked. Um, which led to the other out of bounds play um, that Nikhil Alexander Walker basically punched out of their hands. Beasley's right there, ready to go, and honestly makes a great pass to Simone Fontecchio. Uh, if you watch the replay in slow motion, they the defender almost reaches down and grabs it, and then. One of my favorite parts is Gary V's on the sideline with Tony Finau, the golfer, and Ryan Smith. And coach goes over to Ryan Smith and Gary V, and they're celebrating, which Gary V's a huge New York Jets fan. I don't know if you guys follow him. I love him. But <laughs> you got to think that I don't know if he has a basketball team, but what a great game for him to be at and possibly – um, Ryan Smith is trying to work something with money or funding behind the scenes that we don't know about. So, uh, Gary V even on, on that last play was standing up, uh, I believe screaming at Nikhil Alexander Walker, like to play defense. Um, so I, I enjoyed that cause I'm a big Gary V fan. So I kind of had my eye on him on the sidelines, which was really cool to see. I know there's probably people on here that are are bigger Tony fans with the golf. Uh, he went to West High, a local kid that's a pro golfer now. So really cool just to have those guys there at that game. Um, I see you guys requesting. Coach is on right now. So give me a second, then we'll we'll jump over to you guys. So here we go to Coach. And I think that was reflected at the end of the game. Um Golden State is a very good team. They're very well coached. Um, Jordan Poole had a lot of great moments. Kuminga obviously played an amazing game for them. Um, Clay Thompson is Clay Thompson. They're a, they're a championship caliber team, and um, you know they've been in a lot of close games together. We had a variety of guys step up tonight, um, playing a new starting lineup with guys being out and just continue to be amazed by our team's resilience and their willingness to kind of let it rip. And uh, they never, they never flinch in weird moments of a game or odd lineups, or we're going to change the game plan or change some stuff we're doing offensively. Um, they continue to adapt and they do it together. So, you know, that's, that's what's made Team 49 so fun to this point in the year. And um, I thought our crowd was incredible tonight, especially down the stretch. Um, just a fun night in Utah. What, what did you see in that, that um, the Jordan cussed up with Kaminga? What was the explanation of why that was a, a flagrant two? 
Yeah, I haven't seen the replay from multiple angles yet, um, but it was explained to me that Jordan swiped him in the face, and then there was a square up afterwards um, between the two guys, and that resulted in a flagrant two. Um, I'm, I'm not really <laughs> sure why that led to a flagrant two. I haven't I haven't seen the play yet. Um, so I'll have to look at it before I can give you guys my like further opinion. I'm not trying to dodge it. I just I haven't seen it. But it, I was explained to me that he swiped him in the face, and then there was a square up afterwards, which resulted in the flagrant two. We do have more so we're asking on that too. But, okay. Um, was first of all with Colin? Did he just feel the hammy tighten up? I haven't talked to you about it. Yeah, hamstring. Um, sounds like he pulled it, but. The degree of that, uh, we're not sure of yet. We'll have to obviously see how he gets through tonight and, and see him in the morning. But um, it was clearly bothering him after the play. You guys all saw him going to the free throw line, grabbing it, and he walked over to me and said, I I think I tweaked my hamstring. Um, so we immediately got him a sub, um, <clears throat> which gives me a, a great opportunity. Sorry, I didn't mention this in the open. You know, Nikhil, um, great poise. Uh, getting thrown in and then closing the game for us. Um, you know, he's been... He, he's been uh, tremendous this year, staying ready. Um, his minutes have gone up and down, and depending on who we're playing, some nights he plays and some nights he doesn't, and he never complains. He continues to work really, really hard, and um, I'll tell you what, when you call him Nikhil, he always seems to be ready. Um, so... Hats off to him. He played a great game. Did you tell him you needed a three there, or was that his read to turn the? So we were we were gonna try to get a three off the dribble. Once he broke the three point line, myself and every other person in the gym thought that he was gonna lay it in, and <laughs> uh, it seemed like everybody on the court sort of froze. And he fired it out to bees. Um, he made a great play, but we were trying to get a three there in an attempt to then have us down one and uh, be able to foul and stay in the game. Um, but the initial part of the play was to try to, you know, we were coming in transition, so it was to try to get a, a three off the dribble. Um, and he made a terrific read and, you know, Bees knocks down another big three ball. On the ensuing defensive play, what's kind of, the best case scenario. Go. Will Hardy, we're joined now by Big T Throw Bailey, calling the game tonight with Craig Bowler Jack on at and Sports <laughs> Net. Uh, and T, you, you've called a lot of games and, and played in some big games. And this was one of those endings that was like, that was remarkable. Yeah, and even before that ending, you know, it, it wasn't a game. Man, I, I wish they would have stayed on coach a little longer because they kept asking him questions. But uh, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. I believe Tevin was first, but like coach said, just a fun night in Utah. You know, they didn't play everybody. Obviously we didn't either. And uh, yeah, uh, what a fun win. Probably the most exciting win of the season. So Tevin, I'm going to go ahead and approve you. So go ahead and throw your two cents in here, man. I went from pissed off to excited in about <laughs> a minute. I went, I went from pissed off at the refs for not calling the foul on Jordan Clarkson to then the, the Golden State getting rewarded for fouling him and shooting free throws um, to then, as soon as Beasley hit that three, I was like, are you, are you all really giving me hope? You're really giving me hope right now. I thought we were done for. And then, yeah, the, just that whole last sequence, I was like, this isn't happening right now. And of course, Fontecchio dunks it. And I was like, what a great day to be a jazz fan. <laughs> <laughs> what a great day to be a jazz fan. And I, I can't remember. I'm trying to look back at the, at these tweets and see who, who tweeted it. But somebody was like, well, glad, uh, uh, golden state warrior fans were still in the arena to see this, to see this amazing, uh, play on Philip. And I was like, man, I wish I could have sat next to a golden state fan. And I had been like, well, they <laughs> they probably all left thinking they won with like 20 seconds left up by four. Probably. Oh, yeah. 
No, I I think it that it was great that Simone Fontecchio got that dunk just to kind of put the. I thought he had a great game, and um, I feel like he kind of misses home just because I know that that was a struggle for him coming to America to play in the NBA, and he resigned um, back when De- Ainge wanted him in Boston, so. I don't think he he's totally felt comfortable, but after that dunk, him and Beasley just dude embracing and just a huge grin on his face. And I really feel like that was the type of game that he needed to kind of get out of his own head, because I'm telling you, this guy is a deadly shooter. And if he gets hot, man, he's he's going to be. I think I'm going to die on this hill now. If if he doesn't get more minutes than Rudy Gay, I'm going to riot from, from now on. Like, I'm going to, if I don't see <laughs> Simone on the floor more than I do Rudy Gay, don't get me wrong. I was, as much as I want Rudy Gay off this team, I'm grateful for his, his minutes and his production tonight. However, if I don't see Fontecchio on the floor more than I do Rudy Gay, I'm going to riot. Yeah, I I I even think that he was cutting into Vanderbilt's minutes tonight, um, which I'm I'm fine with. I I think what was that? I'm okay with that. Yeah, so Rudy Gay got 14, almost 15 minutes. Simone got 19, and uh, Vanderbilt got 23. But uh, yeah, it was it was kind of a game too that was a better matchup for him the way that Golden State plays just a little yeah. bit quicker and shooting. Um, I think Rudy Gay, I, I mean, I think not having him and then having him come back was kind of, uh, we've been hard on him, I would say. I, obviously, I don't think he's going to be on the team, but like if he can give us a good solid 15 minutes, I'm okay with that. He scores nine points, shoots 50%. Um, yeah, no, no, don't, don't get me wrong. Like He's a nice veteran presence where it's like, everybody's maybe kind of tired for a minute here at the end of the third quarter or start of the fourth. Let's give Rudy Gay a run for, for a moment and kind of let some guys catch the breath. Sure. But other than that, like, yeah, I think he's good. You know, he gets you some solid rebounds, which we desperately need rebounding. And then he gives you length on bigger guys. Like I felt they were playing two bigger guys and um, we were kind of getting eaten alive there in, in, at with certain lineups in because they had Walker Kessler on uh uh it wasn't Wiseman the green kid and and he just you know yeah. they kept switching Kessler onto a smaller guy which um was hurting Kessler but man we'll, we'll get yeah. to Kessler too um let me get oh go ahead so, no go ahead sorry oh no yeah I was just gonna say I think it was interesting to have Vando and and Gay on the floor at the same time they're kind of defensively switching between four and five but no uh yeah get ready to walker kessler because he played amazing too yeah um yeah we'll we'll hit on walker kessler because he had a great game uh he finishes with 10 points another double double 12 rebounds five blocks (laughs) uh shoots 68 percent from the field only missed one shot so just super efficient and i feel like he really affects shots on the other ends, even if he's not blocking them. But um, I was going to hit on Vanderbilt because, man, it just feels like he, it just feels like he's slowly disappearing. Uh, Just, yeah, only scores four points, uh, zero blocks, uh, four rebounds. I mean, for 23 minutes, you know, what, what does he do? He doesn't feel like he really affects somebody else on when he's guarding them on defense. It doesn't feel like he changes the game or anything. Because um, he doesn't. Yeah, it just... It's because he doesn't. Well, and Fontecchio's not the greatest defender, but, like, Fontecchio's in a stance trying to, you know, slide side to side and get in front of the defender, at least, I feel. The thing with defense is it's a want to, and it's there's a toughness to it. Um like it's you can play defense without playing defense if if that makes sense because anybody can just kind of go through the motions and just kind of play defense yeah and that, that's not the way to do it you have to be intentional and want to play defense to actually at least have a chance and Fontecchio really plays defense 
Yeah, Vanderbilt reminds me, uh, you know, when you go to the local rec center and and play pickup and a, a bunch of kids have been out in the parking lot smoking a joint right before and they just <laughs> think they're on fire. Like Vanderbilt just seems like he smoked a joint right before he got to the arena and just is, is going through the motions. That's man. a great comparison. <laughs> so we, let me let me get over to Down real quick uh, and then we got Armani behind him. If any of you... Other guests want to speak, just go ahead and request. Anyone's welcome to speak on this. Uh, Dallin, Big up? Dal, you're up, man. Wow, we what a game! Holy wow, we woo, what a game! <laughs> <laughs> what, like, uh, my feelings were almost exactly the same as Tevin's. Like, how does that guy, Kavinga, not get called for the foul for pushing Clarkson? Clarkson right? doesn't even. Clarkson doesn't even push or punch or anything. He puts up his dukes, but he doesn't do anything. So how does – and he had his hand on the ball. How did they not see that in the replay, like jump ball? Or well, and with, and, and with, with, with Coach Hardy saying, oh, it, it, um, he swiped, swiped up on Kaminga's face. I'm like, where? There, yeah, must, there, there must have been a weird uh, point of view that a ref had – that he thought he saw him swipe. Yeah, that was weird. That was yeah. Come on, Jazz video team. Come on, oh. you gotta play the whole court <laughs> there. Come on. So I was I was trying to be objective about the refs this game just because last game I think it ruined uh, like the the entire game for us just because Clarkson didn't get that foul that was obvious. So to me, I was even thinking like, hey, like at least the refs haven't been this that bad and. I think a, I think with Clarkson, like I think there was two fouls that he didn't get when he went inside, and I think he's such an unorthodox player, and and kind of like you don't know when he's going to shoot that maybe he doesn't get those fouls as if he gathered himself like a regular player. Um, I just think that's part of his game though is is going up quick and surprising the defender that he's shooting. Um, could have been a foul, yeah, and. I, I believe Clarkson was just trying to wrap him up. I think he was probably a little upset that he didn't get the call as well. But to me, really, the, the reason that Clarkson got through thrown out is because he came up and like squared up afterwards. I think had he not done that, yeah, they would have. Yeah, they, I think they just would have called a technical on both of them. But I think Clarkson was probably still pissed from the last game, not getting that call and then not getting another one. And it just. I mean, do the refs like put earmuffs in? What, do they not hear what Kavinga is saying to him? I'm sure he called him something. Like I, I was gonna say, there, the, JC you know, was fine. Like, JC, he was, I've he never was holding him back. Like he's that. like, he's like, dude, we're we're good. And then all of a sudden he squares up. And I'm like, what did Kaminga say to the man? There, the, Jordan Clarkson is, is similar to Mike Conley. I feel like where he's like, we're good <laughs> unless you yeah. unless you say something or do something to me that's gonna make me fall off the edge. And I feel like he might have said something to him. Yeah, yeah, is <laughs> we've never seen Jordan Clarkson do that, but uh, it was kind of yeah, funny. Was, and and I think the the officiating crew actually called the really decent game all the way down until the fourth quarter crunch time. I do yeah. too. I, totally I think they it. I thought it was a repeat of last game where Clarkson, you know, same thing, and then we lost the game because of that. I but, think partially what what makes it feel like it's they're falling apart is. Also, our team just is is kind of chaotic in crunch moments, especially without Lowry, without Conley, without Sexton, without Clarkson. Like the, they have got to make the refs call the fouls, and I'm not sure they understand how to do that in crunch time because the, the game does become more physical in crunch time. It's just like the playoffs, and you've got to know how to hold your ground and make the refs call the fouls. So what Will Hardy needs to do is just have a few clips of JC to study of Devin Booker just flailing every time he <laughs> gets like yeah. breathed on. He just, ah. Yeah, you got to get that star treatment for Devin Booker's. <laughs> yeah. And no, um, I honestly, like, I know that uh, Na had the, uh, the lowest uh, plus minus on the team. But I really feel like he has, in my opinion, taken control of 
the backup point guard and is developing into those point guard skills. Because I know that he has played more of off guard, off ball position before this year. And it, I just feel like he's more in control of the game. I know that at times he can be sporadic, but um, his length on defense is just so good. And his he has a pure shot when he's shooting, like, I, as opposed to THT is what I'm, I guess I'm trying to get at is I hate when THT does the turnaround jumper and but it just bugs me and I that pass out to Beasley like coach said yeah that, that, was, that was just I thought that was it I thought that was designed the layup he, and he he, even out. even he but, even had Big T fooled it during the call Big T was like oh I think that's how Coach Hardy drew, drew it up but then, yeah, like, exactly. then the interview Coach Hardy was like. No, as soon as, like, he, as, soon as he broke the three point line, we thought he was laying it up. He, he fooled us too. Like, Maybe he was like, just so nervous to shoot the layup that he's like, I'm gonna let someone else miss. <laughs> well, I want to hit on THT too because that's interesting. We've got quite a few people requesting. Um, we've actually got our friend from Finland here. I would love to hear from you. It's I don't know how to actually say it. E I N O I Eno, I know. I wonder what uh, time it is in Finland right now. Yeah, I, I have no clue. But if you want to uh, speak, we'd love to hear from you. Your thoughts all the way from Finland. Next guest up is Armani. Yeah, and, yeah uh, even if Lowry didn't play tonight, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, maybe, maybe like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Armani, you're up, man. Go ahead. Um, you can't say you can't say your no, fam no, fa no. famous saying <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Oh man, um, I think I'm the only person who was not a fan of Jordan Clarkson's minutes. I think he had great little spurts throughout the game, but for the most part, I feel like a lot of the ball was sloppy for them, especially defensively. Um, Walker Kessley, he played a great game for the 24 minutes that he had played. Um, I think that's just about the minutes that Harder should be able to get him. I think he needs to be in the starting lineup. You can see the, you can see a clear difference in the starting lineup. Um. Vanderbilt, but just like I had tried to point out earlier today, on um, Vanderbilt, he just doesn't he just doesn't play great with the bench, and it's like he he he, he plays decent with the with the uh, with the starters if everything is clicking the correct way. Uh, Fontecchio, love the game that he played today. Beautiful basketball, great off the ball, great defense. Well, so you know, a, a little bit above average defense. I won't say great, but he hustled. Um, he made some key plays. Nor Forget the plus minus. Noah played a great game. He well, he played a very decent game. He yeah, played a, I, I he so played too. a very Th decent thank game. Thank you for man, mentioning that plus minus. Thank you. Yeah, forget the plus minus. You 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 get your, you get us three steals, seven rebounds. You you make a clutch pass, and then you make a clutch steal. I can't. He what almost made a clutch three too. It, he almost made a clutch three. Who am I to complain about that? Um, Olenek. Olenek just did exactly what I expect Olenek to do, so I can't really complain about him. He could have shot better. I expect him to usually shoot better than this. That you know, maybe he hit like one or two more shots, but I can't really complain about that. That he played a very decent game. Beasley, Beasley did exactly what I would ask for him to do. So this is why I expect from him. You know, just about you know maybe like sometimes he can give us like a you know seven for fourteen game or. Or like you know maybe another game he'll give us like a six for twelve something like that. And Jordan for come from the three point line, excellent game. Can't really complain about his, except for like a little bit of the defense. But even then, really not really. Um, Rudy, as much as we complain about him, he gives a solid minutes. A solid minutes. He doesn't do anything too wrong. He just doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't turn the ball over, or you know, and he 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 just, he, he just comes in he and does his job. Locations. Nothing's flashy. They had nothing flashy. He plays the correct rotations. He passes the ball when needed. Uh, he played a he played a very good game for the little fourteen minutes that he played today. So you can't. Yeah, I, I feel like the only glaring problems I have with this with this game today was um, Vanderbilt and um, Clarkson. Sexton, I can't. I don't. I don't really know how to judge Sexton at this at this given moment. So I won't. I was just refrain from saying anything about him because it's just like. He had he gave us seventeen, but it was just a weird, weird, weird seventeen. But majority of it came from the free throw line, which is his biggest asset, is that he can get to the cup and get us some fouls. Because we don't have anybody else who will do it besides um Lowry. But yeah, Lowry 
get it as much because he doesn't get as many, as many touches around the paint as he um was at the beginning of the season. So uh, this was just a, a solid game for everybody. I just my I had grace with um Clarkson and um and um Vanderbilt. Yeah, thanks for sharing, man. Um, I I just I feel like it was a great game because they didn't play their best players. We you know we were shorthanded, and really it was just a good game for Simone and and to kill Alexander Walker to get some type of rhythm and confidence going. I believe when Lowry and Mike comes back, every, you know, all the pieces are going to fit back together how they're supposed to. So for me, it was a fun game just to see players that we don't usually get to see. Um, I want to get to our other speakers because we've got two more. Our friend from Finland is requesting to speak, but we're going to go to JFA first. And then uh, our Finland friend, our finisher uh, will go to you. So uh, go ahead, JFA. You're on. Caller number two. Requester number two. Oh, there we go. I'm it, sorry. It always takes a second. About the ding microphone. Yeah, I do it all the time too. You're fine. <laughs> um. So I just I know it, it's probably dead horse, but whatever. Clarkson. Are you freaking kidding me? He's the freaking bomb diggity. <laughs> I know some people aren't like high on him. Clearly, just barely. <laughs> um, I have loved him from the second he came here. I didn't know who he was, but that dude, I want him on my side at all times, at all costs. Like he was ready and he was calmed down and like ready to just be done. But that other guy, uh, whatever his name was, had to have said something. Yeah. Him. I've watched the replays like a hundred times already. And Clarkson's like, what'd you say to me? What'd you say to me? Like, it is for sure the he, he went from zero to one hundred in yeah. about 0. 0.2 seconds. He was yeah. ready to go. And man, I love that he was squaring up. I was I'm watching the <laughs> I did <long> too. <laughs> replay of it, and there's another angle. And what's his name? The Kaminga, Kaminga. Yeah. Um, he's laughing at him. Yeah, I saw that too. I was like, uh, uh-uh. sorry. I just, I'm gonna go beat some people's asses right now. For him. <laughs> get him, get him. <laughs> no. Let me at him. And didn't you love that Beasley was ready to go to war with him? Oh yes, yeah. it was freaking awesome. Here's and one thing, Beasley. I- Here's one thing I want you guys to go back and watch. Cause like I always talk about be- people being killers and like, I think Sexton would, you know, if there's a fight, but if you go back and watch it, Olenek's just like off in the middle of the court, just scratching his head, like not trying to defend anybody or he's just like, I want no part of this. It's like, dude, come on. Kessler was doing this. He, he was kind of, he was probably like, three feet off to the to the right of Jordan Clarkson and he's just like guys guys come on like it's not that big a deal just move on and that Rook, 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 is probably really what I would do but yeah yeah, it, yeah he's like <laughs> those guys were hilarious Rookie, like, rookies can't go. win doing anything in those like, so this They're is the conspiracy part there. of me uh do you think that like after this there's like some shit talking between all the players like you mean like between oh, Clarkson and this tech stream? The gold yeah, state guys were shit talking on the bench during that when the refs were reviewing the video. You could tell they were all laughing. Yeah, they were all high fiving yeah. each other and like, yeah, good play. You're doing great. Good job. Keep going. And it's like, yo, okay, calm down. I, I like I, I like that stuff. It's just like, it, it adds like, I'm coming for you, team. dude. I'm coming. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I could see both sides where Clarkson's a little bit frustrating, um, especially now that he has the ball more. When it was yeah. when it was with um, Donovan and you had uh, Bogey, like he would take bad shots, and he, I mean, he still does, but it was kind of less noticeable just because the ball wasn't always in his hands, and like if he did hit a big shot or caught fire then it just sent us to another level. Um, but there was, yeah, there was decisions tonight by him where I was like, Oh man, like, like one part, um, uh, I believe in the third quarter the ball was really, really moving. 
And I was like, oh, man, this is sweet. Somebody's going to get an open shot. And then Clarkson kind of took a dribble out his defender, popped back and took a three and missed it. And I'm okay with those shots and those bad decisions just because he gives you so much energy. And every single night, I mean, every single night, the dude is going at it. And there's not a lot of players where you can just count on them like that to give you the energy every single night. Night in, night out. And not even just the energy, but creativity as well. There's a creativity and a freeness to his game that he plays with that nobody else on our team has. And we need it so badly. Yeah, he's he's definitely the best shot creator on the team. And that's my and that's my thing with him is that with the given talent that he has, you know, worked for, mm-hmm. he, he has um bad shot selection. It's not it's not necessarily the shot selection. It's just the IQ of when when to and when to not take certain shots. Like there's certain times you will come down the court and he will have a three if you know he could pop a three right there. Yeah. But then he'll sit there and forcefully drive to the paint, draw two people to him, pump fake, go nowhere, hold the ball for an extra three seconds, kick it out, then get the ball right back. And it's just it just it gets a little crazy sometimes when sometimes he just has the shot right there and he doesn't take it. Yeah. And honestly, I think he he's not used to the position that he's in right now with yeah, bringing no, the no, ball no, up the floor. Fun, but fun, fun, fun. Yeah. Um, I want to get over to our Finland friend real quick. And then uh, once we get through all our, our guests, we can hit back on the, this kind of stuff. So, uh, Eno, I know, let make sure I'm saying it right, but uh, – you're on, man. The mic's yours if you're still there. What's up, man? Hey, how do you say your name correctly? <laughs> um, Aino. Aino. Um, you, you were close, but I won't. I was way off. <laughs> Slippy, Slappy, Samsonite. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not expecting you to be an uh, expert at Finnish names, so it's all right. Well, I'm an expert at marketing, so that works. Yeah, yeah, you're close enough. So, Excuse what are what are your thoughts over in Finland? Are you guys all uh, on obviously the market and train and, and high on him? But what's the feel over there? Is everyone turning into jazz fans? Um, pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole uh, um, the Finnish country has bounced between Chicago and Cleveland and now Utah. So, um, we're going with the uh, with the lorry train. But but yeah, you you got a whole small nation behind you right now so it's it's pretty cool to see and and all in all the basketball culture um with um uh, and success has like exploded in finland which has been cool to see as an uh, i used to play ball and have watched the nba for a long time so so that's that, that's really cool to see um now i want to i want to say a couple of things about the game i, I won't I'll keep it short because I'm kind of tired. Um, yeah, what time is it there? Uh, it's it's 7 a.m. Um, oh, I think the game started at 4 a.m. Props to you. Props to you. Um, Major dedication. I, I have a I have a full day of work ahead of me, so uh, <laughs> fun. <laughs> you, have, you have some fun stuff to talk about at work. That's all I gotta say. I, yeah, we, we all have to wait eight hours to, to go <laughs> talk about this. Well, word. none of my coworkers actually watch it, watch the NBA, <laughs> so there's. Um, I sound like a lunatic every time. You, I you have a lot to fill them in on, then. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Um, I didn't. I didn't watch the game like super actively because Laura wasn't playing. Um, but um, I gotta admit something. I I closed the game when. We were down by four, and there were twenty four seconds. <laughs> um, I came back. Uh, I saw I because I saw um, a Twitter notification from Tony Jones. Um, it just said, "Holy shit!" And I'm like, "No, I missed something." Uh, and I, I came back, and we actually won the game, and that was cool to see. But I was kind of pissed off after <laughs> afterwards. Um, uh, Clay had an off night, which which was a Huge for us. I know we shouldn't depend on like um, other players, not from our team, but um, it was good to see. I think he was like eight from twenty-five from the field. Yeah. Um, so that was big. Um, Jordan Clarkson, I love him. He's a he's he's such an amazing man. Actually, this was funny. I, I don't know who said it um, a while ago. That we haven't seen that from Jordan Clarkson. I don't know if that's the case with Jazz, but I just saw, I, I just saw a, a, a picture on Twitter 
with um, Clarkson squaring up, um, I think it was against Dragic, back when Clarkson played for the Lakers. Oh, yeah. And he had his uh, hands exactly in the same position. <laughs> uh, it was like a, like a copy-paste picture uh, <laughs> from, from tonight's game, so that was, that was pretty funny. Um, yeah, uh, wishing, uh, I'm wishing Laurie is okay. I think he had like an illness, um, which was the reason he didn't play. Yeah, it was kind of unexpected, honestly, from my standpoint. Yeah, yeah. hoping he gets back for the next game, um, as well as Conley. I think it's, uh, is it against Minnesota or Denver? Minnesota. Rudy Gobert comes back to Salt Lake City, so it should be a good one. <laughs> okay, hoping we beat his ass up. But... <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Have you followed Lowry since he was in Chicago and Cleveland? Like, have you... You followed him pretty. Um, I followed him um, since he was in high school in Finland because um, he was he was not he wasn't really like a big deal, so to speak, but he was sort of on the radar as uh -huh. a future prospect because there haven't been that many Finnish NBA players, so I'm like hyper aware anytime anyone in Finland has like even college potential, so. Um, I watched some of his games when he was playing for the um, Finnish under-18 men's team. And then then he he went to Arizona. I watched a lot of his games in Arizona. And and when he when he was obviously drafted, I watched like I think I think I missed like four Bulls games in total where he wasn't wow. playing on his rookie season. So I was like watching intensely and then, then I kind of calmed down after that because my my sleep rhythm just started like uh -huh. going going downhill really fast. Yeah, but I always I always have a tradition that I, in the beginning of the season I I basically get like no sleep at night. I, I just take <laughs> naps during the day, and I I, I I I'm trying to watch like every game. And I got a bit of a boost this year with the amazing start, which yeah. looks amazing to see now. Things have cooled down, but I'm still expecting us to make the playoffs. Um, Lowry for MIP, all star. And, and, all, and all, it's, it's also a so like this up. year, so that's great to see. So, totally agree. he should make all star. Yeah, I think he yeah, should, definitely. should as well. So, let me before we let you go, uh, because I know you're exhausted, um, watching Lowry, uh, probably more games than a lot of us have watched him. What do you feel like he's doing well here and and allowing his success in Utah? Oh man, that's a that's a great question. Um I think he that's hard to say. I want to say he's um well the the biggest thing is he's getting more touches um than he was necessarily in Cleveland or Chicago. In Chicago, we actually we saw flashes of this in his second year. I think there was a definitely there was a stretch in like February during his second year um, where he had this like a five or six game streak where he was just destroying everyone, um, and it had the same uh, he had the same kind of kind of um, plays that he's had this year where it's in the flow of the offense he's not like dominating with the ball he's kind of moving off ball really well. And so I think that's the key. That's always been his like a a strength, if you could say that. Um, now with the Finnish national team, it's a bit different because there's, he's like a like a superstar, so he has to have the ball. Um, but yeah, he's being more aggressive. He's actually taking the ball to the rim, and obviously, um, the way he he's he's really good at drawing fouls. So that's been big for us. Um, because he get, actually gets to the free throw line, and yeah. a lot of his points come from there. So that's that's also a huge part. So one last question, and then if you want to stay and hang around, you can. But what is the next step for him? Like, what 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 does he need to develop in his game to take it to a, a, a whole nother level and just be dominant every single night? Um, he needs to be more selfish, and I don't. <laughs> I'm honestly, I don't know how realistic that is um because it doesn't seem like his personality 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's not the type of dude to actually be selfish with the ball. And that's also, uh, that's really instilled in a lot of Finnish players. And it's, it's if we go even deeper, I think it's in the you know, Finnish psyche that um, in any team sport, we don't really look kindly to like selfish players. Yeah. But in the NBA, it, it's, it, it can be good for you if you have the right amount of selfishness. So I think he might have to learn that or he can, you know, he can ball out on his current level. And he, if he can like get more points um, with better off the ball movement and just tweaks to his offensive game, then I'm, I'm equally as happy as long as we're winning. Yeah. Yeah. We've had the debate many times on here, whether he's a one or a two or a three option. And uh, yeah, same thing. Like he kind of needs that killer mentality. And I I think that's a good word uh, that you use. He needs to be a little more selfish. (laughs) Does does Lowry retire a jazz man? Mm, I hope so. I mean, he's doing good right now, but like, I mean, I'm, I'm getting kind of tired of like bouncing around teams. (laughs) I just want to like pick one. So I'm I'm hoping he stays. Like the, the situation seems good right now, and the team has potential. Uh, also, I like Danny Ainge. So you know, if he sticks around, uh, I think the team will will do well. Um, but yeah, no, I'm a I'm a full pledge fan, Jazz fan, and I think my actually I just recently bought my um, bought my Lowry jersey, so it's coming in the mail. Um, I haven't actually bought any jerseys when he was in Chicago or Cleveland. Uh, so good. That means which, you're really a Jazz fan. You, you, which yeah, which yeah, jersey of his did you get? Uh, what? Which jersey of his did you get? Uh, just out of I got curiosity. The, I got the purple one. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, I'm, you're a true Jazz I'm, fan. I'm not gonna talk down on the other jerseys, but you know, I, they weren't really like. I didn't see them worth buying. To be honest, <laughs> you're not the only one who thinks that. I, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, all the Jazz Nation. <laughs> well, man, if if Lowry does ever go anywhere, uh, you can come to Utah, be a Jazz fan. We'll we'll baptize you in the the Jazz fan water. Uh, oh, and that's make... on my bucket list. I'm hoping I'm hoping I can catch a Jazz game before. Uh, Laurie moves on to the next team if he even does. I think there's a good chance he stays here. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen with this team and what Ainge might move, but I mean, he's our best player right now, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinions. So uh, I, I think he's a guy that the fans like here and uh, has a skill set that is is very unique in the NBA. So I, I, I see him being a piece. Um, and everything basically has to work out with contracts and money and getting the right pieces. So it, it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, yeah. in the next few years here. But I appreciate you, Sharon. And uh, I guess you don't get to go to sleep. You get to go to work. Yeah, my uh, my workday is starting in 35 minutes. So um, I'm just making coffee right now. All right, man. Well, uh, feel free to join any other time. And if you want to stay here and listen, you can. But uh The other thing that I wanted to hit on that we were kind of hitting on before um, we were talking is THT. I know that there's been times we've been high on him. Um, Oh, shoot. My wife's calling. You guys still there? Yeah, we're here. Yeah, we're here. Um, Hopefully she's not locked out. She's coming home from the jazz game right now. Uh, So THT, we've been high on him. There's been times we're like, yeah, he's, he's the point guard. And then it's kind of switched to Sexton. And now, you know, uh, Nah has a great game tonight. So what, I mean, he didn't play at all tonight. What do you guys think is going to happen? Is it, is it purely matchups that, you know, some guys won't play maybe THT plays against a team that plays slower. I actually thought now was a great matchup for the golden state game, the way they play faster, but what's your guys's take? Uh, we'll go to Dallin yeah. first. Yeah, I think, I think it's just Matt purely matchups. I, I mean, I loved Nas game tonight, despite the plus minus, but you know, that can't be just everything. And yeah, it, it, I think like coach said, it's, uh, purely, you know, not nah, staying ready and all the guys need to stay ready because he may call their number that night. Yeah, it's impressive that he, he 
I mean, a lot of players can get discouraged and, you know, not be uh, focused once they get in and once they get their opportunity. And, man, he he's I don't feel like he's ever been in and not been tuned into the game. Maybe he's made mistakes um, or been outmatched by somebody else, but he, he's impressive. And I, I even thought, you know, like looking over at the bench tonight, you got Azabuki, Balmero, uh, THT, like is there a trade that we could get for those three, like a pick or, you know, if they're not playing, is there something we can get for them? So it, it stuff like that always runs through my head. Uh, we've got Colin. Uh, I know he's on the East coast, so let me get him on real quick. Colin, what's up, man? Go ahead. Hello. 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 Hey, What's up, guys? Uh, first of all, I wanted to say, uh, uh, Aino, I think that. Yeah, Aino. Aino. A legend, because you guys constantly hear me complain about how I'm on the East Coast. And it's <laughs> yeah. 12.30, and I'm so upset that I have to stay up until 12.30, 1 a.m., and this guy's making coffee at 7 a.m. after finishing the game. So you'll never hear me complain again. Yeah, he wakes off. up at 4, if, what, 4 a.m. <laughs> to watch the game and then goes straight to work. Uh yeah, you'll never. Hey, you'll I, never I, I wonder again. if the poor man even knew Lori Markin wasn't playing, and he goes, oh, <laughs> he isn't even playing. What did I wake up for? <laughs> him, He's already committed. Him and but that other like guy it. from Uruguay too that was up in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Uruguay isn't even as bad though. I mean, what was that? Only just. I don't know. I think it's not that. I think, I think it's three or four in the yeah, morning. A lot closer than games. Yeah. But um. I wanted to touch on uh, Fontecchio and get your guys' opinion on that because um, he doesn't get a lot of minutes. And I, I saw a tweet before the game started that was saying that they wish we had kept Jared Butler because Fontecchio isn't even a real NBA player. And I thought it was funny that they went after Fontecchio whenever we have a player like Balmero on our team, whatever. But um, Kawhi I don't think should be on the team, but anyways i think that he played great there is defensive issues i know but it's his first year in the nba and he hasn't got a solid there's so many players on our team that have not got a solid run of minutes I, you got to understand how hard it is as an nba player to not know when you're going to play and then when you do play obviously you're going to make a few mistakes you know you go to the wreck or whatever and then you if you ever play basketball you go to the wreck you're not hitting shots right away like yeah, especially when you're a new player in the NBA. To well, and you're and then you're trying to gel with your teammates yeah, and the, the teammates. system, the con- yeah, right. a new country. Well, I was going to say for Fontecchio more specifically, he's used to Euro game. Like the, he's Everything. had to work with the coaches to get his his shot right because the three point lands a, a li- just a slightly different, but that slightly different is a big deal. So. It's huge for him to be able to to play as big as he has. Exactly. We can go on and on about all these different things that make it hard to adjust into a le- into into a, this league that he's in right now. Yet he's still, when he gets minutes, sometimes he can perform. And tonight he performed well. So I'm thinking, like, I think he has the arm length to absolutely be either average or above average at defense if he's taught that. Obviously, he wasn't. Whoever was his coach in the past wasn't hounding him on that. I mean, he's he's coming from Euroleague where he's one of the better guys, and then coming to the to uh, the NBA where he's a fringe player. So that's got to be very very hard. I think if he's working constantly at the defense, I think he can be a very 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 good player. And I don't know how old he is, but I think that's a like if what we saw tonight is not even like if, if we get like. Not even that, but if we get some of that and then his defense improves, that's a very, very good player. And then, like, it, it reminds me, like, not there's not the same at all, but, you know, when Royce O'Neal came in, he's a really good defensive player. And then you're wondering if he can kind of work it out on offense. And then he did, and then he becomes a very, very good, solid role player, undrafted. Yeah, I, I, I kind of hit on this. I don't know if you were here earlier, but... I have been high on Fontecchio since we signed him and I kind of watched him in Euroleague. So 
it, it is hard for fans to understand what he's capable of. I think tonight, like I said, was really the first time he felt comfortable in a jazz uniform. Um, obviously he's, yeah. So I was going to say the, the, the downside to him is he's a little bit older, but I mean, I, didn't realize, I thought he was like 24, 25. To be yeah. Cause he was supposed to come to the league five years ago. He signed another contract in Italy, which kept him there another five years. But to me, the dude's fearless with how he shoots. Like he, he has a true shooters mentality where just it, like a miss doesn't affect him. And when I watched him in the year league, Dude, he was hitting shots from the logo. Like he has range way beyond the three point line. And uh, I'm telling you, if he has a game where he just catches fire there and tonight, honestly, he, he, what did he shoot? We, we went over it earlier. Um, where am I looking here? 60% from the, from the field. 83 is what NBA.com said. 83%. All together, yeah. So sixty yeah. percent from the field, fifty percent from the three, but he scores eighteen points, and and then and then he has a play where he drives by the guy and dunks it with his left hand. Uh, he's he's long and a big dude, so even if he's not that great defensively, I feel like his length will keep him on the floor. Uh, at this point, I'd rather have him than Vanderbilt just because he's an offensive threat. And v Vanderbilt just seems completely checked out i don't know what's going on there because i i i mean the first five games i know i liked him and a lot of other fans liked him um, but he just hasn't been the same, same player since then and um fontecchio fontecchio reminds me of a clay thompson like we we talked about this before uh i think it was kevin saying that clay's gonna go off and Ano said it, he kind of struggled, and I I really feel like Clay's not the same without Steph because Steph demands so much attention, but also Clay is so good at knowing where to go, and he has that chemistry built with Steph that if Fontecchio can get on the floor and build the chemistry with Conley or you know whatever whoever the point guard might be, he's really good at moving without the ball, and then once he gets it, he only needs one or two dribbles. Uh, or maybe zero dribbles to get a good shot off. So I'm I'm excited for Fontecchio. Uh, I don't know if anyone's as high as as me on him, but I just think he's got a skill set almost like Lowry, where he's he's taller, longer, has a buttery, smoothie, silky shot. He's even got that teardrop that is super smooth when he goes in there. Um, and throws it, he, you know, he can go left or right hand. Uh, I don't think we've, we've seen, I think tonight is the closest we've seen, but even then it's like not even close to what he could be. And sorry, I was looking at Kessler's line. I apologize. But um, Fontecchio, I think he's, he said it in his post game interview. He said that it, it, the NBA is just a much better game and he's learning how to play in it. So I think you're, you're all right. Like he's gonna, he's going to be a very nice player for us. I think. Well, and that, that might've been my favorite moment of the game is him getting the finishing dunk and then him and Beasley just do just celebrating and hugging and smiling. Cause like that does a lot for a foreign player. It's almost like, okay, I've arrived. Uh, I do belong here. I've made it. And I think he's kind of been questioning that, ever since he's been here. Well, and it wasn't even just with Beasley. I think after they d got done celebrating and they like try to refocus up just for that last second, just to make sure that the Warriors didn't obviously get an even crazier moment than they did. And once it was solid, the whole team just, took, just rushed him. And you just saw that we all saw the biggest grin on his, on his face that he couldn't wipe off. And it was just an amazing moment. So yeah, I hope, uh, Man, I hope I hope he just keeps going from here as far as his progression. Yeah, and for his psyche, like that's huge for a shooter too. If if there's a, like, I mean, his shots aren't like they're very far off, and most of the time when he shoots, I feel like oh, this is going in. So it'll be fun to see, and I, I feel like coach is also uh, gaining a little bit more trust in him as well as you you saw with the minutes tonight. So um, he he's he's going to be a fun one to keep an eye on. Honestly, games like this I love just because we get to see other players. I, I wish we would have saw a little bit more of Ochai. He got in 24 seconds, which was interesting. Just a sh 
someone explain that to me? Why why was he in? He was in. The, uh, we got the steal. Yeah, I was gonna say, wasn't he in? Because Jordan, uh, Clarkson. Jordan Clarkson. Yeah, I call you too. Uh, yeah, but I believe we needed to make a three, and I think he was in there for his shooting as well. I just. But okay. I thought that was. I thought it was kind of weird. Like you throw him in, you know, super cold, and expect him to hit a shot. Um, I guess I would that. Almost, uh, Tht more in that specific scenario. Well, I can't remember what the lineup was. You'd almost think that he throws in Rudy Gay. I can't remember if Rudy Gay yeah. was on. Tht was just as cold. Well, I, with Rudy Gay, I almost wonder if if Rudy Gay was his hand was feeling sore and could have coats. He's like he's, he's like I'm probably done for the night because I'm my hands are already feeling sore. So yeah, because he, he was all suited up at that point. So. Okay, well, um, if anybody else wants to speak, uh, I'm going to go for just a little bit longer. Um, we've got, I want to hit on Rudy Gobert coming to town. I put a pull out because <laughs> we had in our private conversation, would you boo Donovan Mitchell? And there's been those comments. And of course, I said I would boo him. But uh, I just boo basically yeah. anyone that's ever been yeah. on our team. Yeah. And uh, Donovan and not Rudy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. Once I got there, I'd probably do whatever the majority of the crowd did. But uh, when I watched Donovan play last night against the Lakers, I, I missed him, man. And I think I've kind of been mm, not jealous, but like maybe resentful that he's not here. And so when I watched him last night and he just looks like an MVP player. And you remember all of those close games and all those exciting moments that he had. And like, that was the first time I actually missed him. And it could have also been because I hate the Lakers so bad that it was easier to cheer for him. Uh, but yeah, he he's, he's just balling out in, in Cleveland right now. So um, I think the comments that he's made have kind of been taken out of context for the most part. Um, and, and jazz fans, you know, in, anytime he says he's having fun and jazz fans are instantly going to take it. Oh, you weren't having fun here. You didn't try hard enough, but the dude is one of the top players in the league and it, it's hard to, uh, not see him here, especially if you imagine other pieces that could have been around him. So, uh, anyways, I did a poll on Rudy Gobert. If, if people said, I just said, are you going to boo Rudy Gobert on Friday? And I think there was only one person that said yes. The, so, everyone else said no. Enough, that was me. But I'm not actually <laughs> never, I would never actually boo Rudy Gobert. He's been here for nine years. I just wanted to put yes because I was just feeling like it. But <laughs> I also don't want people to root, uh, boo Donovan Mitchell. I just thought it would be funny to vote yes because I knew it would be the only one. No, I, I think uh, I think for both of them, they're going to have a tribute video. I mean, obviously they had one for Bo Bogey, so it wouldn't make sense that they don't have one. And I don't I don't see how people are going to boo either one of them, especially once they play the tribute video. I was going to uh, say the, the same lineup. thing. Once you see the Donovan Mitchell tribute video, you are not going to boo. You're going to you're going to be on the bridge of crime. Is what's yeah, gonna happen. yeah, I'm you're going to miss him. I think everyone. Damn. I think people are torn. Between like I miss him, but then also like I hate that he's on another team. At least that's feelings that I had. But uh, well, yeah, watching him last night play against the Lakers and and just destroy the Lakers. What I was like, yeah, good for you, man. So Funny enough, Donovan Mitchell actually liked so so. Jay, you know how he's a huge um, Mets fan. Yeah. So Degrom left. It's his favorite player, right? So he he quote tweeted something and saying this sucks, man. And a Jazz fan commented. Uh, tell me about it and he liked it <laughs> yeah um, yeah he's getting a little taste of the medicine that he gave us well um i'm gonna hop off uh because i'm not as crazy as these people from finland and uruguay and uh i have to work in the morning um so i like to actually get sleep and somewhat not feel miserable but uh a fun night in utah uh really exciting we've had a lot of close games but this one i feel like takes the cake just because we were down by four with 24 seconds had to get two steals beasley hits the big three olenic gets the steal nah gets a steal beasley takes it up gets the the pass uh fontecchio gets the dunk like it, so many different people contributed to this win 
in the clutch 24 seconds that that you know they just didn't give up and and i think as jazz fans we were used to that last year um so it, it this team continues to surprise us and make it refreshing and give us a reason to continue to tune in and um i i appreciate you guys for sharing your thoughts this honestly this podcast would be so boring if it was just me talking and it makes it so much more fun to interact with you guys to meet jazz fans from around the world from uruguay finland if there's other fans listening on here make sure you follow us on twitter and jump on the spaces after the game i don't believe we've missed a oh we did miss the one game that i went to but uh we're we're pretty consistent we're here after every game and uh Oh, I forgot to mention YouTube. Last episode, we had more streams on YouTube than we did on the podcast. So we live stream on YouTube as well, if if that's easier for you. But you can go to YouTube uh, to rewatch it or re-listen. You can go to Apple, Spotify, uh, really anywhere you, you get podcasts. So go Jazz. I appreciate you guys tuning in and we will see you Friday for the return of the one and only Rudy Gobert. It'll be fun. See you guys.